We're just waiting a few more minutes. We're just waiting for a few more folks to be able to join us and then we'll get started. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. We are just gonna wait a few more minutes so more folks can join us. But I want to welcome all of you, all of those who are watching through HowlRound. Hello to all of you. And I just wanna let you know that you are able to join directly through our Zoom link. And you can chat with us and interact with us through our chat box. HowlRound has their website, however, uh, you'd have to refresh it continually to be able to find our feed at the very bottom. Um, and at the Commons, there'll be the link for the Zoom room. And you can go ahead and click that link to join us here in this Zoom setting. And then you can join us directly and interact with us here. So we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear your feedback. I know Monique would love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. So that would be wonderful. And Monique is saying, she just said, hello. So I'd like to just explain a few things while we're waiting for other folks to join us. So first of all, hello, my name is Garrett. This is my name sign with the G on the chest. I'm not directly involved with this production myself. However, I'm facilitating this evening's discussion. And I'd like to, I'm, I'm actually very honored that IRT and Monique asked me to moderate this evening. So thank you for that. For those of you who are joining us tonight, we're gonna start with a brief discussion with the panelists. I'll be posing some questions. And while we're discussing, please be thinking about comments, some feedback, some thoughts, some questions, anything brewing in your heads, uh, pros and cons, positive or negative, good, bad, ugly, please share, please tell us, please tell Monique, bring it on. And the simple way that you can do that is in the participants section, you can click on the icon that says participants and you can click on the raise hand feature. And that will come up with a blue hand icon and that'll immediately pop up by your name and we will be able to see, we'll get a notification and we'll be able to bring you into our room and we will be able to discuss and interact with you directly. So please feel free to raise your hand at any point during the discussion. And it won't bring you into our Zoom right away. Uh, we do have a stage manager, her name is Emily. And when I'm ready and uh, when I'm ready, I'll let Emily know to bring you in. So. You can go ahead and click the raise hand at any point that you would like to ask a question or make a comment, and then we'll bring you in when the time is right. So please don't feel any pressure to do this um, if you have a comment or question. And if you don't feel comfortable asking in front of the group for whatever reason, that's absolutely all right. At the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A section as well. At the very bottom of your screen, in the toolbar, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment there without coming in onto the screen and joining us uh, without the camera on you, I will be happy to sign the question or comment for you. We would obviously prefer to see your beautiful faces, of course, but we would understand if you'd prefer to type your question. I'd like to emphasize for those of you who haven't experienced this kind of uh, platform, this kind of media format, you won't see other members of the audience. You're only going to see the panelists. Um, and currently you should see, I believe there's 11 windows all together on your screen that you should be able to see right now. So you won't see the audience members. Um, if you'd like to chat with audience members during this discussion, you can go ahead and utilize the chat box to do so. So the chat functionality is there for your use. However, I'm not going to be fully attending to the chat box because I'm going to be paying attention to the panelists and what we're discussing up here. So if you'd like to chat, um, it's you know kind of like a backstage chat. Um, you can feel free to do that. But just 
be aware that we're, we won't be fully attending to that chat box during our discussion up here. And if you'd like to ask us a question, please use the Q&A box. So thank you so much, Amelia, for reminding me. Um, I, please click gallery view to see the entire list of windows, uh, excuse me, the entire screen of panelists. So it should say gallery view rather than speaker view. And then you'll see, you'll be able to see everyone participating. If you only see one window right now, you'll need to click on gallery view. So thank you for that reminder, Amelia. Okay, great. So if you are, so you are seeing one screen, then you're gonna to need to click gallery view. So I know that's a lot, and I think that's sufficient for now. And it looks like we have a cameo appearance from someone else here who has just joined us. So again, for those of you who just joined us, my name is Garrett. I'm the moderator for this evening. And I'd like to quickly go through and have everyone introduce themselves, except for the three interpreters. Three interpreters, I misspoke, two interpreters, but we actually have three interpreters tonight. So if a hearing non-signing participant of tonight's discussion would like to make a comment or ask a question, we do have sign language interpreters for your disposal. So we will be happy, we'll be happy to do that for you. So regardless of communication mode, communication modality, we will be happy to work with it. So come on. So, so first let's start with Monique. Uh, if you could explain who you are and your role in this production. Hello, my name is Monique Holt. Uh, you can call me Momo for short, and this is my name sign. Um, I'm the Play playwright and the artistic director of this show. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Thank you. And next, Amelia. Hi, my name is Amelia. This is my name sign. I'm the assistant director and editor of this piece. Great, and Andrew. Hello everyone. My name is Andrew Morrill, and this is my name sign. I go by he, him, his, and I am an actor. And Joey. Hello, I'm Joey. This is my name sign. I'm an actor and I use he, him, his pronouns. Jackie. Hello, I'm Jackie Ross. I'm an actor in this production. Malini. Hello, I'm Malini Chaito, and I'm an actress in this. I go by she, her, and hers. Dickie. Hi, everybody. I'm Dickie Hart. This is my name sign, and I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm an actor in this piece. Uh, and the other three folks are our interpreters for this evening and Monique. Actually, oh. let's go down to uh, who just joined us. John Yi, please share who you are. And my name is John Yi, and I worked as the animator for this production. The animator, so you did the commu computer animations for this. Wonderful, perfect. All right. So let's start with Monique, of course, the top dog for this production. If you wouldn't mind sharing briefly, how did this show come about? How did it start? Sure. So we, I had started working with IRT previously um, on some other projects. Uh, and one of the, uh, I, it had become known to me that um, they were looking for a particular person uh, for this. Um, extra for this additional piece um, coming up. And so when I was asked to produce something, the idea came to me, um, please untranslate me. And that was a title that just initially came to mind that I thought, you know, I wasn't really married to. So I tried to get rid of it. <laughs> um, I tried to see if any other ideas would come to mind, but for some reason, it just started to take its own shape and form. And from there, we just started expanding upon that. And that's what became what you saw today. And I'm assuming this all started before COVID-19. Yes, this all happened before. 
So when the pandemic hit, how did it change your preparation for this production? Oh, COVID had a huge impact on the vision um, and the interactive portion of the production. Um, I originally had an intention to utilize a scrim in the stage play. Uh, and so it was gonna be able to capture different movements, capture different, um, uh, different characters and their identities and being able to interact with those characters as well as those who were gonna be in front of it on stage. Uh, the ASL poetry portion was meant to have a dance choreography to it uh, with music. But since we were limited to the Zoom screen, we dropped some of those pieces of the multimedia. So that wasn't entirely possible, but um, we made some adaptations. Uh, Amelia, fortunately, uh, through our discussions, she has um, some great editing skills and so we, through our discussions, started to think about other ways that we could edit the film or edit it to um, make it what it was. So thank you for your help, Amelia. Wonderful, thank you. Now, was this the first time working with animation for you? Mm, yes, yes, this was a first for me. I had worked with other multimedia tools, but for animation, it was a first. And what was that experience like working with animation and working with Jan Yi? Well, really how I had envisioned the animation was meant to be um, an interview. Did you say an interview? Or Interviewed animators all over the United States. Got it. Thank you. And so I was looking for some really, um, you know, talking to some top level animators to some entry level ones and John Ye really kind of had me, you know, thinking that he was almost toward the top um, in the nation. And so I, I had chosen to work with him, uh, with John Ye. And through our interactions, I had never really seen the, his kind of work in theater. And it got me really thinking, I would love to work with, uh, to work with him. So that's why we chose him. So Johnny, so was this the first time working on a theater production for you? Yes, it was my first time. Mm -hmm. So what was this experience like for you? Were you surprised or did you think, oh, it's, this is nothing? What, how did you feel? Was it new for you? Was it challenging? It was a surprise. There were some challenges. I'd never experienced making animation for a theater production before. You know, in terms of um, moving the production along. I, I received the script. I was able to look it over. Once I was able to look it over, I asked questions about things that were confusing for me. And then I'd share my ideas about the animation. I would test things. I would make simple animations. I would ask, is, is this the idea? Is this kind of what you're thinking of? And so we'd kind of go back and forth. And if it wasn't right, then I'd make some edits, make some changes. I'd submit those and make sure those were to her satisfaction. So previously my animation background, you know, it, it tries to mesh and gel with what the artist's envisionment is. So I was, I was really proud to work with everyone in this theater company. It was really wonderful. So I'm really happy that it worked out. Yay. <laughs> really awesome. So proud of your work. That means that you would be willing to do another theater production in the future? Yes, I would like to do more. Absolutely. That's wonderful. We will look forward to more of your work in the future. Thank you so much. So I'd actually now like to turn my focus to Amelia. Hello, Amelia. You were the assistant with Monique on this production. When I say assistant, what were those duties, those responsibilities? Obviously editing, which bravo. Um, so that was one of your main responsibilities, editing the production. And then, you know, what, what other processes were involved? As assistant director, one of my responsibilities was making sure that the actors had enough light, which was the most challenging part of the process, believe it or not. <laughs> Joey! And really, I... 
I inform them where to direct their eye gaze. It's a challenge on Zoom. You've got these screens and it's, and I, we wanted to have a standardization of, you know, where people were looking. And so I would say, look it up to the top, but on my screen, they'd be on the bottom. And it, so we had to make sure people were looking in the right directions for me. And of course I was supporting Monique and we, you know, we would have sessions where I would give her some advice on my observances. And of course I edited this piece and Zoom, you know, Zoom has a specific look and we really wanted to avoid that. It looks dark, it looks heavy. And our goal was to bring levity and color to this piece. And we wanted it to be interesting visually. So that was part of my responsibility and process. Now, how long did it take to edit this production? I only had eight days to edit the whole thing. Eight wow. days? Eight, eight days, yes. That's <laughs> off you. That's off. Did you sleep? Did you sleep at all those eight days? I slept a couple days and there were a couple days that I didn't, but I'm alive. <laughs> you know, that, that passion, you know, that just, that feeds you, right? That forces you into, into that kind of work. Absolutely. You put it perfectly. So now I'd like to focus my attention to all five actors. So I'm wondering, what was the most challenging aspect of this for you? I'll go, Andrew. Oh, definitely. Um, this is a changing world, and so is acting, you know, bringing it onto a screen, um, you know, it just gives us a deeper hunger for connection and working in a physical space together. I think there's a, a you know, that is functional for us to bring out our emotions onto a screen, uh, onto the stage, but working with a, a 2D screen, we really had to just be patient with each other, um, you know, and, and also being able to establish a connection with the other characters. I'd like to add to that, Andrew. It was a huge challenge for me as an actor because similarly, you know, this is a piece that requires connection and with a screen that becomes an interesting challenge on stage or in film, you can make eye contact with your, your scene partner. But in Zoom, I'm, I'm trying to look at someone's face, but also I need to look at the camera, but I don't want to look at the camera. So that's an interesting challenge. But we're a great team. We're supportive. We push each other. And we made it through this, especially with everything that's happening in the world with coronavirus, Black Lives Matter, everything that's going on. Thank you, Dickie. Malini, what was challenging for you? And I noticed you had to play the role of a hearing person. Was that challenging for you? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Definitely. A hundred percent being you know a deaf person and then switching to a, a hearing character was woof um you know i i have a little bit of uh training in, in speech therapy and so uh you know i really tried to focus on not overdoing it but just kind of letting my mouth follow the words uh that was a challenge for me uh thank you for the patience to you know work with me and i had to you know uh I had some pretty heavy texts some long monologues um and, you know, I tried to just picture it as, you know, if one day I had suddenly became hearing just, you know, uh, instantly, you know, what would that be like for me? I don't know if that would be, you know, if, that would, if that's ever possible, but I mean, you know, I don't know what that would be like. So that's what I tried to embody. But the acting pushed you into the unknown, isn't that correct? Absolutely. Yes, it did. Well, you did wonderfully. Thank you. And Jackie, what about you? What was the most challenging for you? Really the, the technological aspect for me, I'm, I'm not tech savvy. I'm not what you would call tech savvy at all. So figuring out lighting, figuring out Zoom, and it's all new for me. I'm, I'm used to having everything set up for me and now having to do it myself it's a challenge and 
and I'm, I'm all constantly checking, what am I supposed to do? Amelia, you have to be my eyes. Oh wait, I have to put my eyes over here. Oh, thank, and thank you so much, Amelia, for keeping me on top of that. The whole thing was a new experience and it was a very positive thing to experience. But of course, you know, nothing can fill the space and make connection like working with a team, a great team like this. So we're all on the same page and I can't wait till we're all in the same space too. It's really nice because previously we had discussed, I think it was a, a, a night or two ago, you know, how everyone has been so spread out and it's rare to be able to assemble a team like this. And so we were able to bring everyone together. Uh, that was one positive is pulling together this excellent team, skilled professionals from all over, which was just really excellent. This is a great example of that, of that opportunity. Joey, what was challenging for you? Really adapting to this new format in a Zoom workshop as opposed to a stage reading. I'm not used to, I'm used to rehearsing and rehearsing and then giving a performance, but I'm not accustomed to rehearsing and then the day of two hours later, I finally understood the concept and now I'm performing that, that piece. So it takes a different kind of energy and a different kind of mentality to be able to accomplish that. And so with real live theater, you have the luxury of time to develop a character and learn the nuances. And in this, this piece, it was really sort of a spur of the moment, go do it. And Zoom fatigue, which, you know, all of us can relate to, you have to pay attention because you never know, you'd take your eyes off the screen for one moment and everyone is waving, trying to get my attention. It's, and so it's nonstop, you know, deaf folks, deaf folks look away for one second and all of a sudden the whole screen's waving back at you. So that was, that was another challenging part of this rehearsal process. So a challenge, uh, not just for the rehearsal process, but a challenge to be deaf in a visual world, period, so. Zoom is not deaf friendly. No, Zoom is absolutely not deaf friendly. Mm -mm. Some ways, yes, some ways, no. So Nicola, and I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, I believe you have your hand raised. Would you like to join us and make a comment or ask a question? and they disappeared. Where'd you go? <laughs> Sam has the hand their hand raised. Would you like to come and join us? And it does take a few seconds uh, to bring the person into the room with us. I see her. Ta-da, ta-da. Is she here? Is she here? Is she? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. That's another problem of deaf folks on Zoom, trying to get everyone's attention. <laughs> right. Oh, here we are, finally. Oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> So just wanted to make a few comments. First of all, congratulations on a fantastic, amazing show. Monique, your production, your writing was excellent. Amelia, your editing. I was so entirely impressed. It was so awesome. I do have a question. So moving forward, um, oh, so I'm sorry. The, the audience, who was your intended audience? I'll go, Monique. So really, I wrote this for people who don't know much about the deaf, about the deaf culture and ASL. Uh, really, I wanted to emphasize how um, you can access this through, depending on how we set things up, 
uh, we talked about you know accessing archives, the DS or the the library, the digital library for ASL, and um, I wanted to fix a lot of the things, um, but your feedback is you know very much welcome to help us with you know that process. I think a general comment would be the transitions um, and the editing. Uh, it was very nice. However, it was very nice. Um, oh, with the actors com coming up uh, between each scenes, the blending, them appearing and then disappearing. Um, so leading from one scene to the next. So I thought that was a really cool transition. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the choreography, the pictures, the visuals. Graphics. Uh, the graphics were really nice. Mm -hmm. The hand shapes, the, the hand shape features that were shown. Mm -hmm. it, um, it was clear, it was all clear for me. So all the cultural information, because I, I am an interpreter. So I thought that that was very clear. It was relevant for me and I understood it as an interpreter. Um, you know, in terms of uh, hand shapes and linguistics, a lot of those features that were discussed in the play. Uh, Dickie's uh, oral presentation, his piece, that was really lovely. So I just think overall, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you see the A? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I can graduate. Yeah, it was just amazing. I loved it. You got an A, Dickie. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you. Now, Monique, hmm. you said that you did write this play for hearing people who don't know deaf culture. Is that correct? Yes. So I believe that the show has no voicing. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Was that your intended choice? Yes, it was. Uh, remember that every time uh, there's a deaf production with an ASL or with an interpreter, something um, doesn't quite, uh, it, it's not quite the same. You know, when you're in a room and everyone's having to pay attention, um, it's not on the English. Yeah, it's, it's not quite the same experience. And so what I wanted to do was to be able to experiment what it would be like to try to give the hearing audience the exact same experience that deaf people are getting. Um, and people are saying that they're, they might be missing some things here and there. Um, we're still experimenting with that and why that is, um, but we're gonna keep going with the flow and, and see what happens. It's a big challenge in terms of deaf theater in, in terms of creating accessibility and creating accessibility for a non-ASL using audience and, and showing them art. And that's a big challenge. And we are still researching, developing, we're still struggling, we're still experimenting, we're still finding different things. And this, this very thing is proof. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if, oh, if anyone in the, in the audience who's listening or watching right now, if, if you are a hearing member of the audience, and maybe your AO skill, ASL skills are not so much there or you don't have any American Sign Language skills. Um, if, if this applies to you, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand and letting us know what your experience was like in watching this show. And that's okay if there's no one there or maybe, maybe everyone here is proficient in sign language, which is very cool. So this is an actual signing zone then. So that's wonderful. So, and someone has raised, Marla has raised their hand. So if you wouldn't mind joining us. Michael. Oh, Michael. Michael. So if you are hearing and you prefer to speak you don't know sign language. We do have three sign language interpreters here. So hello. Hello. Hello, hello friends. Some of you I know, some of you I do not know. 
So Joey had mentioned uh, the Zoom fatigue. So I'm not sure in terms of editing um, and what Amelia was doing with the editing um, and you know how the picture was moved around and how the editing was done with, um, I mean, it, it looked very smooth and it was absolutely fascinating. Um, I don't, I, I just was completely fascinated by it. I see. Um, the academic areas of the play were all fantastic. I just thought it was really well done. I really applaud you all. Monique, I really applaud you for, um, as the director. I just thought, wow, you know, to be able to go in this direction, um, to move in this direction for theater while COVID-19 was happening, while theaters were closed and you were able to produce this, it was just incredible. You were all fantastic and you connected with each other and how you moved with each other and how the panels moved, the windows moved and uh, in, in synchronicity with each other during the play. And I just, it was just incredible. Seamless. It looked like you moved in the right ways when you were interacting with each other in the different scenes. So I just really enjoyed, I think the editing was just really well done. So I just, I loved it so much. Yay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, I'm supposed to disappear now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Woo. All right. Beth had typed in the chat box. I'm assuming Beth is a hearing person, and she said, At times I felt like I was watching a silent film, even in a 100% deaf production, there still is sound. So it's hard to get used to for a hearing audience. And yes, I'm hearing and no ASL skills. So a completely silent production was hard to get used to for a hearing audience member. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there is a question in the Q and A box. Okay, a big one. All right, here it is. A big chunk that I'm going to sign. This is from Marla Bronstein. I have a few linguistic questions. Did, did I misunderstand that F and yellow are signed the same somewhere? So F and yellow. And then what does skid mark mean for ASL? So let me hold on that. So Monique, would you like to go ahead and answer that? Sure. So yellow is um, the color, um, but F, um, it, it's, it wasn't yellow. It was F and the number nine that people can get confused because it's the same hand shape. Same goes for the number um, two and three. They also resemble the letters B and W. So it's kind of similar. Um, they, they just use uh, color coding to indicate which two um, meanings had the same hand shape. And so, you know, that was something that we came up with quickly. Uh, on stage, it would be differently. Uh, it would look different because John Ye would uh, use some animation to be able to highlight those things in another visual way. For skid mark, I'm not sure I recall what that was from. Was that a non manual marker, non manual signal in NMS? Is that what it was? Okay, this is Garrett. I think I remember seeing that in the show, but I don't remember where or why that came up. Okay, <laughs> well, well, please uh, don't remind us and we'll have to rewrite that part. <laughs> um, so all of the linguistic questions, I would say maybe one third of it is 
factual and then part of it is also the rest is kind of fictional okay um that i've, I've made up so okay and she also said just to let you know as an fyi mary and mary are not homonyms if you're not from if you are from new york <laughs> I knew there was some some kind of argument about that <laughs> when it comes to linguistics, you know. And I, I had the same things come up when I, we were doing translating Shakespeare. <laughs> no, it's it's a joke because of the accent and where people are from. They're different communities, so in general, you know, you know, people who don't have that accent, it is. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> And then there was some confusion about the comparison of pale, as in the color pale, mm -hmm. and then pale, the stick, to stick. Yeah, the pale, like to pale, like the verb, like to stick something in. Mm -hmm. To impale. Impale, okay, to impale. Uh, impale, uh, similar to pale, the color. Okay, great. The sacrifice made her cry. And All right. the poetry was incredible. And finally, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Monique or someone else, if you could explain the creation of the sign for trauma. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll just throw in something out here. So trauma typically has been signed this way, like a mark above the, the head, but there's also been a trauma along the heart because it's also, you know, indicates this emotional trauma. So, um, I don't know if that's something that's necessarily created and made up, but maybe anyone wants to chime in. I agree with Monique that it's similar to the scar, like the sign for scar is that same action depending on where on the body. So trauma is a scar of the mind. So trauma can be signed across the mind like that. I would assume it has, uh, that's where the origin is from. I'm not a hundred percent sure. That would actually make sense. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And to wrap up, Mary said that this was just really wonderful. And thank you to all for all of your hard work. And she is fangirling all over you. That's what she said. And she says, there is no way that she herself is going to get on camera. Uh-uh. Why not? <laughs> she's, she's a little afraid. But she is just fangirling all over all of you. So Monique. wonderful. Thank you so much. And okay. Monique? It's okay. I really appreciate your comments. That really helps us start to, you know, use that to take it in the next direction as we move on with this, because we want to get um, feedback to make this more accessible to everyone. So that's the goal. And I thank you. Okay. So now we're going to jump. Okay. And oh, she's saying, oh, my bad with the F and the night. Okay, so that was my mistake. So no worries at all. And that is just fine. And now, and then she's saying, I adore you in, in all caps. And thank you so much. And thank you, Marla. Sorry, not Mary, Marla. Okay. L Liara, Liara. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Liara. You had some beautiful visual elements, especially with the scene. I believe it was called the creation scene. Mm -hmm. I, now if you're, was it called the creation? Creation scene? Was hmm. there a creation scene? Uh, the, with the swimming, 
Oh, I think it was. Oh, in the beginning, in the, the poem in the beginning. It was just beautiful. I think that's what she was talking about. <laughs> so if the goal, and she's saying, yes, that is the one. Sorry, I forgot what the name was. So okay. however, now the question, if the goal for this production is eventually to come on stage, would you prefer to have that scene altered to fit the actors to in person or keep the video element or leave that decision to the director? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, when I wrote the play, IRT asked me who would be directing this. And in my mind, I already had the vision of what I wanted it to look like. So could I really give that to another director and have to kind of explain my vision or should I just direct it? I think I sort of feel like it's my baby <laughs> and it's, it's still in its infancy. Um, not really ready to confidently give that away yet. Um, we're still kind of, you know, working out a lot of the concepts. Um, no offense to anyone else, but uh, I think understanding my goal and what I really want and what I want people to take away from that, I think is something that I'm still working out. So I'm wondering eventually when this production takes off to Broadway or what have you, do you already have something in mind that who you would like to direct this or you don't know yet? I want the director to be someone deaf period. <laughs> Amen. Mic drop. Yeah. And the actors to be deaf as well. Otherwise, it's not going to be understandable to them and to the other people. They have to be able to embody that in order to convey it. So, yeah. Yes. So I just want to remind folks in the audience, if you would like to join we would love to hear from you. So please do raise your hand and join us in the Zoom room. Yes. And we do have Annie who's raised her hand. So please come join us. Annie, Amelia. what are you smelling? Hello, I Annie. Hi. So I have three questions here. The first one is for Monique. Oh, so let me back up here. Oh, I'm just still mulling over the production. I'm going to have to watch it again and again and just continue process processing this. And kudos to all of you for all your amazing work. So the linguistics aspect of the, the play, there's strong linguistic elements to it. So, um, so you made, you'd say you made up about, oh, one third is factual and two thirds that you just were fictional that you made up. So yes. why did you, why did you decide on those percentages of what you made up and what you decided to have factual? Well, I wanted it to just feel like the student was in the research process. And not that we had um, already done that research already but I wanted the hearing, uh, I wanted to show the comparison between um, the hearing languages and English and how there is that research already done. And yet on for deaf and ASL, we're still in that process. So um, I know that the structures are different between the languages, you know, even the modality between an auditory language and a 3D sign language, um, you know, there are a lot of different distinctions there. Um, the vocabulary, uh, the labels and the names and the depth of the linguistic meaning behind things. Um, you know, we're just starting to scratch the surface when it comes to ASL. This is a very new research uh, process. So I just started playing around with some of the ideas and kind of put in some made up um, concepts for as food for thought, just to start thinking about it. <laughs> so there's a follow up to that response. 
So the dramaturg, how did that person help you with your process in terms of uh, building up on this, uh, on your linguistic structure? Well, so first, when I... Haruna Lee, the dramaturg. When I brought this to her, thank you. Them. Uh, we, uh, to them, we met up, um, you know, we shared each other's, we share the same training backgrounds um, and kind of this resistance to uh, um, having hearing people be in it. Haruna is hearing, and so I oh, had a resistance. Ah, sorry, thank you. And so I didn't want anything to be lost, but we got together and I wanted to get her perspective as a hearing person incorporated into it. So I thought that was interesting and I was open to that. And so we started kind of sharing ideas and that's what created sort of this pathway that ended up shaping it what it is. Um, we both learned from each other and I wanted her to be able to learn, you know, what I was trying to convey as well. So that's how she played a part. Would you consider having an ASL linguist uh, involved in your next workshop? Big time. Oh, yes. I've already been thinking about that. Um, I knew that. I knew That's that it time was, frame. Mm -hmm. I had a tight time frame. Yeah, so we had uh, we were able to finish some of those portions and or also already thinking of act two and um, haven't written it yet, uh, but we're looking to incorporate those lingu linguistic information into that and then being able to work with a linguist to do that and the dramaturg as a part of the team. So hopefully we'll meet your expectations. <laughs> for the actors, for the notes that she would send you in explaining um, explaining the meaning and the absurdist aspects of the play, you can definitely see um, the, the emotions and the range of emotions um, uh, from the uh, from the tech person, um, and and going back and forth between the two emotions. So I'm and I'm sorry. I'm this is the interpreter. I'm having a, what was the what you're having a hard time. I'm, I'm I'm struggling. The question was going between the emotions of absurdism. And your emotions. Oh, we we lost some people. We lost Garrett. Okay. So I apologize, Annie. I I missed the tail end of your of your question. It, but I think if you want, if they want to go ahead and answer, I think the actors got it. If they want to go ahead and answer, did somebody want to? Yeah, I don't. And Jackie's saying I could answer. Yeah, Jackie. I think Jackie wants to. Um, I mean, I think for all of us, we kind of just went with it. Uh, we went with the plan. Um, it's not, you know, all figured out yet. Um, you know, I have four different characters that I was playing. So it was more, uh, not totally, all of that, you know, was not to all totally in depth. Um, but it was just an opportunity to, I think for, um, you know, kind of Momo was directing us to try a lot of different things. So it was a lot of just kind of going with the flow, a lot of ex very experimental. Okay. Back. You are coming back. So I guess that would be my response to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Garrett's saying, I'm sorry, it looks like all three of us crashed at the same time. And Monique's asking, did you get your question answered, Annie? Did you are you satisfied with the response? Um, and I think Andrew wanted to respond to your question. Uh, yeah, there are two different things. Um, there was the un, what was it? unknown, un, unhung, unknown, oh, unknown. Sarah, Sorry. do you want me to take this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So with with getting the script, we had the ASL gloss. 
we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of the specific linguistic aspects of the play that were confusing to me. So we had to, to be able to go back and forth between both languages, the English gloss as well as ASL. And and for Monique, she had to show us what those transitions would look like going back and forth between the English gloss and the American Sign Language and being able to show that to us visually was what we needed to work with. Got it. His screen is a little gritty to me on mine. So um, I think there was another, somebody else wanted to answer the question, Dickie? Yeah, so what, in terms of what Jackie said, it's really like learning a new skill as an actor with the ability to really get it into and pick up these skills with a short time frame. I'm really grateful to this experience. And now I do have that tool in my toolbox. And, you know, the willingness for us all to dive in and, and roll with it and let the process guide us. It was sort of a, a refreshing and interesting way. I mean, we got, we found ways to play with the camera, to play with forced perspective. There's so many different ways to experiment in that manner. And we felt that we were limited, but it really forced us to get more creative. And that, that was a really nice experience and challenge for me. So there's a follow-up question. How much time did you rehearse and did you film as you were going along? Yes, uh, Amelia, do you want to answer that? Sure. We did not film in order, no. Because we followed the actor's availability for the filming and that was, a, that was also a challenge. How do we get everyone in one Zoom call at the same time? We rehearsed, I'd say, for two weeks, around less, less than, mm -hmm. less than two weeks. But we, we would rehearse each scene, got about two hours worth of rehearsal. We didn't repeat and run it back and again and again because we needed, I, we knew we needed time for editing. So, you know, I knew I wouldn't have time to finish the film if, I, if we didn't film quickly. Mm -hmm. Malini? Yes, what Amelia was saying, I think we worked for about a week to a week and a half, and then we had to layer on everyone's films together in one in such a short amount of time. So the rehearsal was, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes at a time. And then it was like, okay, let's do it <laughs> and go. It's kind of freezing up, but so it was more like that. Um, just these sh short moments of, you know, filming and rehearsing and then putting it all together. And then of course, you know, we got the script and we, you know, we had to read through it. And then I noticed the ASL linguistics portion and it was very fascinating. And so, you know, Monique explained a little bit more to us to get, help us get a better understanding of how it all fits together. I really enjoyed the process and especially playing the, the, the character of a hearing person. Um, I really liked, I enjoyed ling the linguistics class. Um, those were things that I liked learning about. I understood that portion and for audiences to also get access to that too of things that maybe a lot of people don't know. I think it was a challenge to think of how we would perform that. Uh, sorry, that last part was a little freezing up, but yeah. She was talking about deaf perspectives versus hearing perspectives. Got it. Yeah, it's freezing. Okay, got it, thank you. Got it. And then Monique. So Monique, for me, I think when I was writing the play, I wanted the actors to be learning something new as well. So often, um, you know, we, you know, there's an education portion to it, but we wanted both the actors and the audiences to be able to learn. Uh, 
And so a lot of times, um, you know, I think being able to educate about ASL, audiences will assume that ASL is so just beautiful, this beautiful thing. And that's kind of the depth of the, the feedback that we get. And I loved it so much because it was so beautiful. But really to unpack and, uh, and elevate the, the, the education behind, well, you know, uh, the perspective of ASL, um, that it's, you know, layering that with the, the drama of it and the animation layer too. I mean, that helped so much with being able to convey what we wanted to say. And that also showed the interaction between the actors that we didn't get to do as much, you know, on a stage and incorporating the, the absurdism into it as well, you know, that helped. Oh, Malini has a hand up. Yeah, and oh, freezing up. Sorry. Wait, slow down. <laughs> You're freezing up. It's freezing up. Can you slow down, please? Yeah. Oh. So she said that um, sort of like how hearing people have lyrics and um, in their songs and uh, this beautiful music. It was sort of kind of a parallel for us to be able to do that um, in ASL that we could show that we can do something similar. Right? Yes. <laughs> Legend, here's my last question. The scene with um, this, the concept of understand and the figure that <laughs> comes out, was that um the interpreter or what was that was it a mag uh magic genie interpreter that popped out of the finger or i'm not really sure uh, i wasn't sure really how to take that this person climbing out of this index finger and um yeah i wasn't sure uh, what was your in uh what were you envisioning with that well, joey do you want to explain that uh, I can try, sure. <laughs> so keeping with the spirit of absurdism. Sorry, I have cat hair on my hands. So. So we had, you got the idea right, all uh, sort of a genie in a bottle, or in my case, a G, uh, understand in a wine bottle. <laughs> Drink up. But the understand character is there to serve as an invisible accessibility provider, just invisible understanding between two groups that can't communicate, a hearing and a deaf person. It's silly, it's definitely absurd, it's funny, we're keeping with the spirit of that theater tradition. I think, I really, my, this point is serious. I think that in our life experience, many of us have felt frustrated that people don't understand what we're trying to say, it's not clear. And I'm saying, this is what I am saying and you do not understand me. Therefore, the interpreter must not understand me. And I do just feel, a loss of agency and I wish that I could just make my information penetrate straight through to your brain. You know, it's a struggle trying to figure out a way to make sure that that other person will understand me through all of this confusion and it's ridiculous. So, you know, it's a, it's a, a wish. It's on my wish list. If only dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> I would like to have that genie in a wine bottle. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's my bottle. That's mine. And, and on, a, on a serious note, in that part of the process, I, we're looking for more of that. We want to incorporate more of those kinds of things to figure out, you know, what things we can let go of and what things we can incorporate more of. And really, I mean, right now we can add any, uh, we can add any of your ideas um, to see how it will you know, as we do the rewrite. So I'll definitely keep that in mind. I really appreciated what Jackie was saying. 
Yeah, I would love that wine bottle. I would love that genie in a wine bottle because I think all deaf people just want, you know, everyone to be able to understand it and not even think about it. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Love to you all. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. So we could talk all night long, night well, night after night. So we we did limit this Q and A to just an hour, and I think there was just one more comment. Joanne Dean. Uh, Joanne Dean. Joanne Dean. Great job and a great job, and she is looking forward to seeing the full production. And the animation, the research, how it all blended together. It was a completely immersive experience for the hearing audience. So thank you so much, Joanne. Thank you. And Monique, do you have anything that you would like to, sh to add before we wrap up for the evening? Mm, again, uh, if you didn't have an opportunity to ask your question or something might come up later for you, uh, you can go ahead and email our IRT, uh, Corey, at IRT and she will forward me all of your comments. I really do want to understand what you got, your feedback. It's really going to help me with the rewrite. So thank you. And we really hope that you enjoy the show as well as the panel. And I want to thank everyone who joined us this evening, the audience and the panelists as well, and the interpreters. And thank you so much to you all. Thank you and hope you all have a wonderful evening.